All right, you guys, this is Ross. I thought in today's video, we would look at a very special tomato that I decided to grow for the first time this year. That's kind of what this whole tomato planting slash trial is all about, is really to find some tomato varieties that are really special, that really impress me, that beat out some of my favorites. And so far in the trial, um, you know, there hasn't been actually that many tomato varieties that have really impressed me further than my favorites. Um, there's the white tomasol, which we've talked about in other tomato variety reviews we've done. That's a really impressive tomato that I'm a big fan of. I also really like this, um, this Bradgate's tomato here. It's a smaller um, cherry tomato called Napa Chardonnay. And we've done a different separate review, kind of just like this tomato review we're doing, but exclusively on that particular variety. Um, I'm also a big fan of this bicolor that I grew this year called Black Pineapple. It really has a special flavor to it. Although I have not been too impressed with the bicolors in general, um, there is a few different varieties. If you guys go back and you look at some of them, uh, there are some definitely some impressive genetics that I decided to grow this year that are specific for fresh eating purposes. Now, there are a lot of varieties within here that I have really yet to experience because although they've been ripening fruit, I've been turning them into sauce. And the reason I've been turning them into sauce is because they're, they're paste tomatoes. And that's really what their main purpose is. So if I haven't really gotten a handle on those yet to really determine which of, my, which of this whole entire trial has really made my favorite paste tomato. Is it the San Marzano? Is it some of these other Italian heirlooms I grow? Is it an orange colored paste tomato, like the orange banana that has historically been my favorite? So this has been rather interesting. Um, this one here in my hand and the, and the plant that I want to show you guys is called pork chop. So this is the variety that we're going to look at today. Just like you would eat a pork chop, that's how it's spelled. It's on Brad Gates's website. He's the one who bred it at Wild Boar Farms. And if I had a guess, I don't know what parentage went into this and what was crossed and what wasn't. But if I had to guess, this fruit to me is very similar to green zebra. And green zebra, for those of you who know, if you've been watching these tomato videos that we've done, the green zebra is one of my favorites, especially for that mid-size, maybe salad type tomato like this is. Everything about this is very similar, but it has a slightly less acidic flavor. The flavor is a little bit different. The colors are obviously different is that this here, as Brad Gates describes it on his website, is that it's a yellow tomato, but he says that, I don't, he says that no tomato varieties are truly yellow. They're actually orange, but, um, and that it actually, when it's ripe, will turn gold. And you could say this is definitely a golden color. Uh, to me, it's more yellow with uh, orange striping on it. And the striping pattern and the stripes themselves look a lot like a green zebra. So. If I had to guess, like I said, I think it's somewhere in its cross there uh, of green zebra. And, um, you know, green zebra really does look the same. It just has different colors and that green zebra is more of like a, uh, I think it's a light, it's a light green undertone within the darker green stripes, if I recall correctly. So this one here, as you know, I could show you guys the plan. I could bring you guys in closer, but what's really important is the flavor because that's not really what we're focused on this year was, you know, evaluating some of the production and, you know, the vigor and just how many tomatoes that these plants would put out. I mean, this is such a high dense planting that to me, it doesn't really matter. We still have a tomato right there on the vine and it's probably produced about six or seven in total. And then as the plant is going to grow up, it's now has some energy that's being freed and it will continue to fruit. Um, it'll flower again as there is a flower cluster up there. And I may get some more at the end of my season before frost. So that's pretty cool um, that, you know, although it's, I would say probably not the most productive variety to me. And what my concern is, is how awesome the flavor is of this particular tomato. So let me show it to you guys and you can get a nice, little close up here of the fruit. We're gonna cut it open, we're gonna taste it, and we're gonna talk about, that's really the reason why I love this particular tomato so much. It's all in that flavor. So let me cut it in half now. It's 
So there it is. You know, even the inside looks really similar, if I recall correctly, to the green zebra. So these little pockets of, of uh, seeds and, and gel, the um, pattern on the inside is quite similar. But again, it's like a, it's a yellow tomato, right? Um, by the way, historically, I don't really enjoy yellow tomatoes. I've never had a yellow tomato that was any good. People, you know, talk about things like Kellogg's breakfast and some of these orange, yellow tomatoes that people eat fresh. And whether that's the tomato itself, I'm not sure, or if it's maybe my climate. But I've never really ripened here a decent yellow tomato to the, or, or an orange tomato for fresh eating purposes. So I've been pretty biased over the years. And um, Brad Gates has just said on his website, this is the best yellow he ever tasted. And I'm going to be honest with you, it is. It is the best yellow I've ever tasted as well. I totally agree with uh, what he said. And you know what? It's really becoming more evident to me as I've been trialing all these different tomatoes that the heirlooms have a place. It's really nice to find a really awesome heirloom, uh, especially pink brandywine. But it's pretty clear to me that breeding some of these tomatoes and really crossing them and really knowing what you're doing, like Brad Gates obviously does, especially after tasting so many of his varieties now, the guy is really, um, really talented at what he's doing. So um, my hat's off to him. Let's try this. Oh yeah. Nice tomato flavor. It's very fruity. The core in here isn't too bad. So it does have a lot of fiber. It does have a lot of that core, but it's not too tough. It's not exactly a melt in your mouth beefsteak tomato, like a piece of chocolate, you know? It just melts in your mouth. You gotta chew this one, but the skin isn't that rough. The texture of the inside here, the, uh, the core isn't that bad either. It's pretty smooth, and it reminds me a little bit. What does this remind me of texture-wise? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure, but I'll tell you this, guys, is that it's, it's actually a pleasure to eat. The juice in the gel is really, I think, where all that flavor is, all that acidity, kind of just like the green zebra. The green zebra really has all those gel pockets that give it so much zest and acidity. This one's a little zesty. It's got some nice acidity. It's nice and balanced. It's not overly sweet, um, although I would say it's a pretty sweet tomato. Um, it's just a winner. I mean, this has got like everything about it, flavor wise, texture wise is great. And I could obviously see why Brad Gates says it's his best yellow. And that's why we decided to grow it. And I'm happy to, you know, confirm at least here in Philadelphia that, uh, that's an accurate statement. That's the variety there, pork chop. Um, we've got some other ones here ripening. They've been ripening for quite some time and, uh, yeah, I've just been enjoying tomato season, so hope you guys are as well. Hopefully I can find some more really good ones for you guys that I can grow in the future and recommend as well, so we'll see. This one I'm quite excited for. It's called the Pian Pianolo del Vesuvio. I think that's, I think that's right. Um, but it will uh, really dry well. I'm going to really turn some of these guys into dried tomatoes, like a sun-dried tomato. We're gonna preserve them in olive oil and some herbs and have ourselves uh, really nice treats throughout the winter. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon, all right? Take care, hit that subscribe button. Check out the other videos we've done now on tomatoes. Catch you guys soon.